one of the things I've noticed that seems to, for some reason, touch a nerve in the gaming community is emulation. Now, honestly, I don't get what the big fuss with people complaining about emulation is. I mean, first off, other companies do it on non-gaming stuff, for example, with computers. With computers, you have tons of PC emulators or virtualization programs, even some from Microsoft themselves, that allow you to run more copies of an operating system or different operating systems while at the same time running another operating system. They also allow you to run older operating systems and emulate older machines to let you, let's just say, run programs designed for, let's just say, your old computer on a new computer. And there are emulators for tons of computer platforms, and many of them aren't even x86, such as the Macintosh, and the Amiga, and the DEC Alpha, and the Vax, and there was even one for IBM mainframes of all things. And of course, virtualization and emulation have been hot topics in businesses, and while many companies will require valid licenses to run your software, many of them specifically allow them or they just don't care. And while some companies really don't like emulation, notably Apple, which even though they don't seem to care, it's technically illegal to get the Mac ROM to boot a machine with. Same with these other machines where you actually have to dump your own ROM. And of course with Apple, they have in the license agreement that you actually have to have an Apple labeled or licensed machine. Which is basically either a Mac or one of the computers from the ill-fated Mac clone program. Meaning technically Mac emulation is only legal if you're doing it on Apple hardware. But in the end, businesses love emulation because they can run their old programs on faster, more reliable hardware that has lower maintenance costs, lower power costs, and is, well, easier to repair than, let's just say, a deck alpha if it breaks. Because keep in mind, let's just say the deck alpha, for example, that machine's out of production. HP does not make or support them anymore, but yet at the same time, they make Itanium servers, but they don't support True64 and OpenVMS just got dumped. So see what I'm getting at? Like, if you want to run your old programs, one of the better ways to do it is through an emulator. And yet when you play games and emulators, you get plenty of benefits too, from improved visuals to the ability to use your own control scheme. So why is it when people bring up emulators that people seem to get so offended. It's like every time I see people talk about emulators, there are a bunch of people online who talk about how bad emulators are and how terrible they are. I mean, sure, some emulators honestly are terrible, such as the ones that over rely on plugins, but at the same time, emulation keeps getting better and better as people find that they can make emulators that work better and run more accurately to the original hardware, as keep in mind with many of these games, these programs have to run just like they did on the original hardware. And yet at the same time, I see with these emulators and stuff, people seem to get so outraged over them. I mean, especially if it's with a Nintendo system. I mean, I've seen people complain about Nintendo emulation for some weird reason, and I see it all the time. Even if an emulator is practically accurate to the point where it emulates all the original flaws of the system, even if it's that good, people will still be complaining about how terrible emulators are. And I see this all the time online. And I honestly don't see what's wrong with them. I mean, is it such a bad thing to have mappable controls? Is it such a bad thing to play your games with better quality? And in the future, as older hardware gets harder and harder to find, just take a look at the early CD-based systems where you've got laser failures, or other systems such as the Nintendo Entertainment System, which first had the 72-pin connectors, but eventually the capacitors are going to go bad on it, and then it's going to be harder and harder to find a working NES that requires more than just plug it in and play. I mean, you're going to be having to have people doing capacitor replacements in a few years on these. Look at the Sega Game Gear, look at the Turbo Express, look at the Sega Nomad and all these other portable systems that were having capacitor issues. It's going to get a lot worse in the next few years. 
And of course, let's not forget arcade systems that kill themselves from the CPS 2 and 3 to the Cave SH3, which has NAND failures to the, um... Yeah, there are so many arcade systems with failures, like the hard drive-based ones, for example. I know those have pretty high failure rates, too. And that's the thing with these arcade systems and game consoles. They're eventually going to die out, and the only way to play them will be on an emulator. And yet, at the same time, you've got all these companies who either get so offended with emulation, you've got these people who get so offended with emulation, and you have other stuff like that happening, too. Because let's be honest here, are you actually trying to play a game, or are you just trying to play something with the logo on it? Because after all, if you really want the original hardware that bad, especially after like many of the original systems cease to work, you do know there are like FPGA development kits out there and somebody could always make their clone system based off it, because keep in mind, a lot of old systems are going to die some way or another. It could be capacitors, it could be bad cartridge slots, it could be exploding batteries. And trust me, if companies want their games to be played more in the future, they might as well embrace emulation instead of trying to desperately fight it. For example, Nintendo, who's one of the more anti-emulation gaming companies, if they put their games on Android, Considering how many downloads stuff such as RetroArch gets, or how many downloads stuff such as, you know, random GBA emulators, if you see how much those things get downloaded on Google Play, on the Windows Phone Marketplace, on Cydia or whatever, Nintendo realizes, or should realize, that they can make so much money off that. And that's all I have to say, because these companies need to embrace the future. And that's all. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.